The future is bright for this young talent, undefeated in two prior glory appearances. Please welcome Serhi Adamchuk. So you want some more? How about a featherweight title fight on the Glory Super Fight Series? Tremendous stuff here, Sari Adam Chuk. You heard in the future, I said a new lightweight in the Glory uh, ranks. Well, he showed up in Glory on less than 24 hours notice at Glory 22 in Lille, France, taking on Marat Gregorian at lightweight, defeating him. Gregorian went on to become a K-1 champion, but Adam Chuk, his regular weight class is featherweight, and he promises to be a stout test for the champion Gabriel Varga. A really dynamic and versatile fighter. Uses movement and angles to get inside the reach of the champion. That's what he's going to want to do and try and engage this into a toe-to-toe -to -toe brawl. He was the winner of the Featherweight Contender Tournament in 2014 and claimed the belt earlier this year. Here comes Gabriel Varga. Thirty-year-old Gabriel Varga from the provincial capital of Victoria, British Columbia, in Canada. The latest Canadian champion in glory, the inaugural glory featherweight champion. Spent three weeks training with rising star Josh Chauncey in Vancouver. Became the inaugural glory champion when he defeated Mosab Amrani in Dubai in a hotly contested affair. Was supposed to defend the title against Adam Chuk at Glory Dynamite in San Jose had back issues. In fact, Stephen, he told us his career was in jeopardy, but obviously he's done what was necessary to rehab, and it's so good to see one of the best technicians in the sport. Oh, there's no question about his technical ability. It's phenomenal. But the thing is, the weird thing, Morrow, and he always does this, he likes to rumble on the inside yes, as opposed does. to stay on the outside. That might be a question here tonight. So we are set for the Glory Featherweight Championship. Five three-minute rounds. Here's the 4-1-1 on the athletes. Sir, hey, Adam Chuck is the younger man by five years, and he's also got a minor disadvantage in the height and reach uh, departments. Gabriel Varga has uh, a few more fights than the Ukrainian, but seems to be at the top of his game. So I expect a high level of kickboxing showcased here tonight by both lads. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your headline super fight of the evening. Five rounds for the glory featherweight championship of the world. These two were scheduled to meet earlier in the year, but an injury delayed the inevitable. Two of the world's top young featherweights will lay it all on the line tonight for the glory featherweight championship belt. In about sanctioned by the International Sport Kickboxing Association. Your referee at the opening bell will be Stefano Valenti. From Palaiper Pala Munza to glory fans watching around the world, it's time for glory! Introducing first the challenger, trained in Muay Thai and Russian Sambo. His record, 30 wins with five losses, 14 of those wins coming by way of knockout. At five feet, eight and a half inches, 1.74 meters, he weighed in at fight time at 143 and one half pounds, and even 65 kilos. Fighting out of the Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Sehi Adamchuk. His opponent defends the belt for the first time since Glory 20 Dubai. His record, 26 wins with two losses, eight of those wins coming by knockout. At five feet, 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at 143 and one half pounds, 65 kilograms. He fights tonight out of Canada. He is the reigning and defending Glory Featherweight Champion of the World. He is Gabriel Varga. And once again, your referee, Stefano Valenti. Okay. 
Sanchez. So the rules for this Sanchez. championship bout five three minute rounds three judges score the fight Malk. based on the 10 point must system okay, winner nine. of each round gets Pay 10 points the opponent nine or less no standing right. eight count no elbows no throws elbow. or sweeps doctor or no referee can stop punches. the fight you know, we are set for the glory featherweight Dash. championship referee Stefano Valenti the champion Gabriel Varga five and one in glory 26 and 2 overall okay. the Adam Chook challenger Fight. he's 2 and 0 oh in glory 30 and 5 with 14 knockouts the bell in round one the champion in the white gloves the challenger in the black gloves and they meet in the center of the ring who will land first and there's the low kick by Varga Varga told us that uh, Adam Chook wasn't really on his radar until he joined Glory, and that win over Gregorian really put him on the map. He's been watching tapes on him, feels he's a good technical fighter, and someone who comes to fight, he feels it should be a great fight. We all concur. It was interesting that Varga said he watches tape. Some fighters don't like to watch tape. I don't understand that. With uh, all the technology at their disposal, right. today get every edge you can, my friend. I would agree with that. Adam Chook started kickboxing at the age of seven, has always been athletic, and if he prevails tonight, he dedicates the championship to his supportive parents, his mom, Ludmilla, and his dad, Serhii Sr. He fights out of the Ukraine, but trains at Mike's gym in the Netherlands. Uh, Mike Passanier, one of the top trainers in the sport, producing the likes of Badr Hari, Melvin Manhoof, Myrtle Gruenhart, the list goes on and on. And I can see a distinct game plan for Varga to stay on the outside and land the low kicks, trying to set up the punch. Stop. Meanwhile, Stop. Varga Hot runs goal. Studio 4 Fire. Athletics with his brother Aaron Varga. Not push. Team Varga. Also in his corner, one of Canada's best uh, trainers, Alan Halmagin. Varga, super confident in his cardio. As a matter of fact, his training moral with those sprints is ridiculous. Hey. Yeah, it's amazing how cerebral Varga is. Uh, I told him he, he'll he make a, a terrific analyst once his fighting days are over, really knows how to how to break down the sport and, and put it in layman's terms articulately. But uh, it's just glad to see that he is back after what he, he told us. He thought his career was over because of his back issues, but has worked with various, uh, I guess, new age uh, technology as well when it comes to the medical stuff. Yeah, acupuncture, mm -hmm. massage, all kinds of stuff. But he's rehabbed and he's very confident that he's gonna continue for, you know, a number of years, yep. actually. So a bit of a getting to know you opening round here for the Glory Featherweight Championship as Varga putting on the pressure, trying to walk down very top. Or make that Adam Chuk. We still got Vagitov on the, the brain after that amazing performance in our last fight. And let's hope this one uh, lives up to uh, the billing. Varga, the more aggressive fighter here. And Adam Chuk can't make it pay when he comes in. But that was a nice sneaky left hook over the top for Varga. Not a lot on it, but it landed. Inside low kick by Varga. So three minutes have uh, elapsed. Set scheduled for five for the Glory Featherweight title. Varga, known for his great fitness and flexibility, really uses a lot of movement and angles and setups. So agile. Yeah, started his martial arts journey at the age of eight when his dad, Keith Varga, a boxer in Karateka, introduced him to Shotokan Karate. Meanwhile, Adam Chuk also uh, burst in mixed martial arts, 11 and four in MMA with seven knockouts. It's not a bad record, really. No, and he believes in staying ready. And I think anyone who fights at the highest level in combat sports needs to stay ready. You don't use, in the year 2015, training camp to get in shape. <laughs> And there's still people that do that. Come on. Mal Shame on them. And they have a very inconsistent career, Mal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I should talk. Fight. My idea of an exercise is hitting the snooze button 20 times for sit-ups. Round two underway here in Monza, Italy. Now Adam Chuk from the southpaw stance, behind the jab. Varga using the kick as a range finder, has Adam Chuk in the corner, and unleashing Adam Chuk, clinching. Bam! And Adam Chu continues to get walked down here. 
he moves straight back. It's not a good thing. There's a left liver kick by Adam Chu. That kick was checked by Adam Chu. Yes, it was. And that will hurt the kicker more than the kicky. Vargo with the advantage in total strikes landed. So still waiting to light that proverbial wick. To set off the fistic fireworks here again. We know Varga very technical. Adam Chuk as well, but one of the thought processes coming into this fight was that, yeah, they would try to maybe amp it up a little sooner, and we're still waiting for that to happen. Yeah, high risk, high reward, but you could go down in flames, too. Oh, beautiful right hand of the body by Adam Chuk. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Adam Chuk trying to counter, but again, Varga comes in with a couple shots that land. Right, fight. Varga's lone loss of the glory ring was in the glory featherweight tournament back at Glory 8 Tokyo in 2013, losing to the highly regarded Yuta Kubo in the semifinals. He allowed Kubo to dictate the pace and, and be the aggressor, and that cost him in that fight. Yeah, that was a great fight. Kubo was the man back then. He slid since then. Maybe one day we'll see him here in glory again. Okay, fight. I like the way Varga is cautiously aggressive because when he comes in, in he's got his hands up. Under a minute left in the second round. Striking at close quarters, a knee from Adam Chu. Again from the southpaw stance. Stabs Varga in the midsection with that left hand. Now just content to clinch and wanting to to smother Varga. Uh, Varga was in tough against Mosab Amrani in Dubai. Fight that he pulled out in the latter stages of that. Uh, fight for the vacant featherweight title. Varga, the first champion on all. Wow, a, a clash of heads has yeah. opened up a cut. Fight! Come on. Huh. I guess it's not in a bad position. And his corner will be paying serious attention to the cut after the clash of heads. There's his brother, Aaron. Out or giving them instructions. Alan Ham Hamajin is the cut man. And he has his work cut out for him. Literally. That, and here's one of the problems when you come in like that with a shorter opponent and he leans forward to throw a body punch, your heads will clash. And especially when the guy's a southpaw like Adam Chuk is. It's too bad because Adam Chuk just did what he had to do, and there was the head right there. No, no, no more. Okay, no more. Calm down. Trying to seal it. The Vaseline. Like a hematoma is beginning to form as well. Keep up your head. Right. The referee Valenti warning both of them about their heads. And the uh, third round begins. The champion in the white gloves, challenger in the black gloves, Moro Ranello, along with Steven Quadros ringside here at the Pala Iper in Monza, Italy. For the first time ever, a glory championship being contested here on the Super Fight Series as Gabriel Varga making the first defense of his featherweight crown. And Varga mainly with that right roundhouse kick lead in all three rounds. He doesn't throw it with a setup either, just throws the kick, and generally it lands, especially to the inside of that lead leg of Adam Chuk. Southpaw Adam Chuk wants to have that lead foot to the outside of Varga, try to keep that right foot to the outside. Now walking down the champion, and Varga walks into that knee, but unleashes a flurry of punches. Adam Chuk timing it perfectly. Yeah, Adam Chuk is trying to time another knee, trying to catch him upside and widen that cut. In 14 of Adam Chuk's 30 victories have come via form of knockout. Eight of Varga's 26 wins have come inside the distance. All of his glory fights have gone the distance for Varga. As same thing can be said for 
Adam Chuk, 2-0. Oh. No Come on. Go, 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 go. Fight. They're getting a lot of, you know, too tied up in the clinch here. Well, the orthodox southpaw yeah. open guard. Because that head of Adam Chuk comes down low like that, and there's going to be another headbutt. Coming up on the final minute of the third round. Okay. Okay. And a scrappy affair, not at all what I anticipated. Well, we're seeing Adam Shoot become a counterpuncher. Have his back on the ropes. Basically return fire with a punch or occasionally with a knee. And these clinches are, this is where, yeah, he's going to get worn and rightfully so. Yeah. Keep up your head. He's leading with it. I mean, that's what's messing up the face of Gabriel Varga. It's not the punches. And there, even there, he's employing a side headlock. I, I'm very surprised at what Adam Chuk is doing here in his title fight. It's from frustration, though. Because Varga is basically, you know, had basically been outpointing him in that first round, so he changed his tactic. Turned it ugly. There it is, there, he's holding again. Varga with the jump roundhouse kick didn't miss. Come on. Okay. Yeah, I hope they can plug up that cut. So we're headed into the uh, championship rounds here in Italy. The Glory Super Fight Series, headline attraction for the Glory Featherweight Championship, and attention being put on that cut around the. Uh, just above the, the left eye of the champion, Varga. Alan John has done a good job of sealing it thus far. Referee inspecting it. How do you have it after three, Stevens? It's a very frustrating fight. I, I knew you were going to ask that. I think that Varga won the first round. It, it got a little close, but I think Varga has won the second and the third as well. But they're really hard to score because th there's a lot of grabbing and a lot of clinching. Mm -hmm. But I would have Varga ahead. But Adam Chuk has landed some shots. So, into the championship rounds. Round number four. Adam Chuk in the southpaw stance. Inside low kick to the lead leg of Varga. Push kick from the champion. Another one trying to create that distance. Launches a kick that's blocked. That push kick is a really smart weapon because you keep the guy away and keep the headbutt away. And you can land that long right hand when he charges in after he redirects the kick. Varga working the body as Adam Chuk looks for the tie plum and again clinching, but yes, and referee rightfully so saying, hey, if you're gonna clinch, throw the knee. Otherwise, you can't do it. a nice combination by Adam Chuk there. Stop! Stop! Varga with the advantage when it comes to total strikes. Throwing 155, landing 32%. Wise man once told me, fight professor, never have expectations, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, an interesting comment because this fight is not living up to barn burner status expectation. Midway point of the fourth. We're seeing a pattern that was established in the first round. Varga moves forward. Adam Chuk tries to counter. They clinch. Adam Chuk telegraphing a potential spinning attack, catches the kick, worn by the referee. Stop. 
frustrating for them because they can't land cleanly on each other because their styles match up in such a way that the southpaw can't get a grip when Varga comes in, so he gets a grip over his body. But I still think uh, Adam Chuk needs to be warned more. He, he literally just wraps his arm around the neck of Varga and clinches. And given the opportunity and doesn't throw a knee, and so now we have some some exchange of punches. And Adam Chuk landed a few. Yes, no deal. Fight. Lots of warns. So, active clinch, active clinch. Come on, fight. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the the quarter of the fight. Come on and fight. <laughs> there, there it is again. Yeah. The Let's walk. Your hand. Uh, yeah, I, I think he's going to get a point deducted if it continues. It would seem like it. Hey, how about that Alunga Vaitov fight we just saw, Stephen? <laughs> Headed to the fifth and final round of this Glory Featherweight Championship bout. See, the thing is, Moro, Adam Chuk is landing a few shots here and there. Mm -hmm. And. He's got some power, mm -hmm. but he's getting pushed back. It doesn't look good because he's on the retreat every time. And he doesn't land anything significantly enough to really rock or hurt Varga. That uppercut was shielded. The, the knee kind of landed to the body, and then we have the clinch and the holding again and the warning from the referee. And that's what's on the line, the Glory Featherweight Championship. Inaugural champion Gabriel Varga cut due to a clash of heads early in the fight in his first title defense. Seri Adam Troop receiving, uh, well, doesn't look like Mike Passenier, his trainer, is happy with his efforts thus far, although he gives him a smooch on the forehead as they head into the fifth and final round. Three minutes left. Dare I say to, to save this fight. <laughs> And again, it's high, you know far be it for me to criticize. These two are world-class athletes. It's just like we said, Stephen. You know, you ex you expect something. They both talk the talk. We know what they're capable of. And you're right. Sometimes the hey, style. What is the cliche? Styles make fights. And this one, there, there's a literal clash. <laughs> there is. And sometimes when you get fighters, oh, nice right hand. Then when you get fighters that are really good technically, they shut each other down. And it's not like the heavy, the greatest knockouts in the world sometimes are when guys are less skilled. Exactly. And more action happens. We've seen that over, I mean, Floyd Mayweather, the best boxer of his generation, not always uh, electrifying the fans, but yet, a, you know, the premier defensive fighter of his era, a technical master, Giorgio Petrosian. We've seen the same thing. And here with Gabriel Varga, just a, a high-level technician, but tonight uh, been, you know, taken out of his element because of the clinching. And dare I say, not roughhouse tactics, but the, the southpaw orthodox dynamic has, has created the, what we're seeing. I find it interesting that Varga, when he pushes forward, doesn't stay, keep range. He gets in tight, like he's going to try and throw an uppercut or a hook, which is causing him to be in range to get buttered again. Like Varga nice knee there from uh, Adam Chuk. Yeah, Varga does oh, not. It, come on. It, yeah, that's, Punching behind the head. It's not, it's not called for. Varga is not fighting long is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah he's, he's forced. He's coming in close, and, and his offense is being smothered, and now Adam Chuk yeah. adding some shots. Yeah, Adam Chuk had a good little flurry there. Yeah, for most of the fight, Adam Chuk channeling his inner Ari Gold, wanting to hug it out with Varga. Now a minute 10 left in. This championship bout, and there's a head kick that lands by Varga. And there again. How many times are you going to let him do that, Stephen? I don't know. It's a good question because I would have probably taken away a point by now if I were the referee. But I don't want to criticize because he sees things in close that we don't see. But there's well, been I a lot punching. of hugging. Yeah. A lot. Too much hugging. I don't think the hashtag is stand up and hug. <laughs> there it is again. Double overhooks, they call it in MMA. In MMA, this is glory kickboxing. Although I've just read something on Twitter, even bad glory fights are pretty good. Hashtag <laughs> glory 25. Under. 15 seconds now, the final 10 seconds of this championship affair. 
And uh, we go the distance here in Monza, Italy. Oh, brother. That was not the most exciting fight in the world. Nope. Frustrating fight for both guys and probably a frustrating fight for the audience as well. They're called highlights, Stephen. Let's look at them. Hopefully they will be well, hot. I'm sure that, see, Adam Chuk with a good punch to the body, but there's oh, the clash bam. of the heads, which was like pretty much the highlight of the fight almost. <laughs> I mean, good knee by Adam Chuk. But again, Varga comes blasting back with punches to the body. And there they go. Adam Chuk again with a good right hook. Try to flying knee. There's the roundhouse kick to the chin by Varga. Oh, brother. Well, the fans here in uh, Monza appreciative and uh, see the, the marked up face of Gabriel Varga. And at least they show their sportsmanship. And it was a, it was a tough one. Yeah, but uh, you can see that Varga outpunched, outkicked, but the knees, Adam Chuk, were, that was his only uh, regard here. So Varga's got this fight in the bag. He should. Let's see. Still awaiting the decision, and every time uh, more, there's a, the belt, but when it takes this long, you have to wonder what's going on, and uh, it was, again, a scrappy affair. You don't judge on uh, the looks, because a uh, relatively unmarked uh, Adam Juke, but he, of course, initiated a lot of the clinches using his head, uh, was repeatedly warned, and uh, there you see the uh, officials overlooking the scores. And we await their uh, official tabulation here in Monza, Italy. So conversation, and again, the glory light, the glory featherweight championship on hand. It's waiting to go around the waist of one of these two individuals. All right, so who will walk out of Monza, Italy, the glory featherweight champion? Tim Hughes will let us know. Ladies and gentlemen, after five championship rounds, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges score them out the same. 48-47 for your winner by unanimous decision. And new featherweight champion of the world, Sergey Well, Sergey Adamchuk is the new glory featherweight champion. Hugging, a little too much holding. Never was docked to point. All right, all right. I'm Canadian. I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. No, I, it, 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 it was a tough fight to score. An ugly affair. Siri Adam Chuk, though, will dedicate this fight and uh, to his parents, his mom, Ludmilla, his dad, Siri Sr. So let's uh, go up to Stephen Quadros with the, the new champion. Sir, hey, I hope we have someone to translate here. Uh, how did you like that fight? So, this no, I'm happy, but this is not my best fight. This tough guy, a little bit different, technical, he go forward. He, yesterday was champion, today my, my day. So, I have motivation because I have guys who want also take this belt. Uh, I respect for this guy. So today not so clean fight, but I'm win. So I'm happy. This is win my team, my country, my city. So, what do you think was the difference technically in the fight and you winning? Uh, so he little bit tall, and he tough guy, good chin. So first round, I uh, only check how this guy work because I don't like watch 
fighters before fight. I don't see internet, so I think uh, fans happy for this fight. Thank you very much. Okay, who's next for you? So I don't know what uh, uh, make for me special. Who next opponent? So I go in Amsterdam and train every day. So I'm ready always. Okay, congratulations one more time on your win. Let's hear it warm, ladies and gentlemen. Serhii Adamchuk.